here to the Mopar Nationwide Series. We're back here for race 26 of the season here at Richmond. Again, here for the second time this season. And only 10 races. We're back here again. The site of the last race in the Cup Series side for the race to the chase. But over here on the Nationwide side, we have a great battle for the championship. Still going strong, and we have a few drivers still in contention for it. As we're here today for the running of the Virginia 529 College Savings 250. Yes. I always love having to say that title. I might end up changing the sponsor after this season on this race because that's not a fun one to remember whenever the race concludes. It's a really long title. But anyway, I want to point out one thing before we start as well. Um, this is race 26. There is 33 races in this series. It's three less than the Cup side. I have not taken a week, like I have not skipped a week for one of those off weeks for the Cup for the Nationwide Series, I should say. During the chase, when it starts... There will be three race weekends that the nationwide races will not happen. It's going to be on racetracks they're not going to, that the cup guys are going to. So there will be more cup races coming up instead of nationwide. So if you see two cup races back-to-back -back come out, then don't freak out. It's just one of the off weeks. There's going to be three of them for nationwide since it will equal out to finish the season at Homestead the same time the cup guys do, which they have 36 races instead of 33. So enough of that explaining. We're getting ready to go racing here at Richmond. And I want to... Uh, Thank Anthony McCurry for actually giving me this Richmond track. He actually edited a little bit to fix up the race because Richmond's always bad. And I did a test race and I was pretty pleased with how it went. And uh, hopefully it should be good for you guys as well. I want this to be a good race for the cup side as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. We head to the back straightaway. And on the pole today in the 14 is Daniel Day. He's already won this season once. And he's looking to win once again. And this, I believe, uh, this is his first pole. Yes, it is. The 14th uh, first pole of the season for Daniel. And the outside of him is Charles Jackson, a former winner uh, this season as well, back at Memphis. I cannot remember where Daniel won, so I apologize. Uh, Bro 2 has Brody Banta still good for that first elusive win. Justin Perry, who's had a good, strong run so far in a short season, is going to start fourth. Row three has the Las Vegas winner, Joshua Mudd, the rookie in the eight car, and Ryan Acosta in a three-way tie for the winningest driver in Mopar Nationwide Series history. Still looking for a win. It's still in the first first lap led this season. That's going to be a storyline for him, it seems like, until he leaves a lap. Uh, row four has Joshua Collard in the seven. Outside him is Michael Causey in the 17. The other One of the other guys are tied for the most wins, along with Aaron Williams Jr. being the third one. And round out the top ten today is Sean Galligan in the three, and last week's winner, picking up his first win, at Atlanta, Sam Young, and the number 66, 500 Energy Toyota. Now, the points battle is pretty close. Aaron Williams Jr. has a two-point lead over Mike Becker, who did get a 15-point deduction last week at Atlanta. That He could have easily had the points lead, but instead he's two points back. He's five points up on Danny Wells, seven on Anthony McCurry, 16 on Sean Henley. Dylan Young is 32 back, and then Richard Johnson and Alex Jones are both 44 back. And that's all the people that are within one race of the 33. Trent Dunn was 50 back, and then Justin Williams is 10th in points, 60 points back. But we're going to look and see what some of those guys are starting. We'll start with the points leader, Aaron Williams Jr., who is starting in 40th position. Wow, this is not what he was looking for, and this is not one of his good tracks. Not really a fan of short tracks, but he did win at Bristol, so he had a little bit of luck on his side. We'll see what he can do there. Mike Becker, you see actually right there in the 43. He's about mid-pack. He has a, he's in a lot better situation, though. We'll see how he does today. And he's going to really uh, jive cautiously this week after the incident last week that cost him. He's only two rows behind the two-car Luke Walker. He's probably still not happy with him after last week. Alex Jones involved in the wreck right behind him. So, I mean, a lot of people may be watching out for that 43, but Becker's going to try to gain some respect back from some of these drivers. Danny Wells is actually right there on the outside of him. As you look back, he is right there. Uh, Anthony McCurry, who is seven points back. McCurry is... Uh, the guy actually made this track, so he hopefully he does good. Actually, he's starting 41st. Wow. So this is going to be interesting to how these guys do. And then Sean Henley, who's the other close guy, was toward the front. He was a little bit ahead of Becker and Danny Wells. There he is. And then we can throw in Dylan Young in the 64, who's actually way back there in front of Aaron Williams Jr., as you see where my mouse is. So they're spaced out, but we'll see what happens. And we'll see how good this race is going to be. But we'll get ready for the command to go racing. And there it is. Gentlemen! And like I said, I can't Start use spectator camera because the actual light the camera is. I don't know how that happened, but anyway. 
We won't worry about spectator cameras. We'll get over to the field. They're right around the field. There will be a lot of pit stops. Virginia, 529. Let's just go out there. Do what you got to do. Melt the state. back. I had to be really quick. But Daniel Day, Charles Jackson will lead him down to the green flag for 40 laps around Richmond as championship weekend for the cup side will be after this. The third six wide is underway here at Richmond. Break 26 is underway. Thanks for these guys on the slide. You guys here for self -spend. can't happen. Charles Jackson really messed up. Ace is back really fast. It doesn't take long to go through the field here. And the first lap is going to be led by Brody Banta in the four. Here comes Joshua Mudd on the inside of the eight car. He's going to try to sneak by Banta here. He's got to be good. There goes Joshua Collard. Joshua takes the lead now in the seven. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of lead changes. See how long we can go without a caution. Oh, Daniel Day just got into Justin Williams. Somebody's flipping. It's Brody Banta. Oh, my goodness. He was up in the catch fence. Just got hit by Ron Acosta. And Daniel Day. Look out. Oof. And I can't believe that four car is actually driving back. He's going to be able to drive that car back. But wow, that was a crazy wreck on lap three. Saw the pulse here. Daniel Day was involved. Everybody's trying to catch up, it looks like. Oh, we got cars. Oh, Dylan Young's been wrecked. Dylan Young. Six in the point standings. is in trouble. And they're still wrecking. Trent Dunham's in trouble. Saw Chris Kyle back there, cars stacking up. There's Daniel Day, second on pit road. There's Brody Banta. There's Trent Dunham right there, Chris Kyle. And he got slow down. Looks like Joshua Osborne has some damage. Oh my goodness, they're gonna start running each other. Kind of see what has damage. Jack Richards has some damage. Look it up a little bit. There's Danny Wells, Aaron Williams, Jr. right there. Anthony McCurry, they'll all be clean. They're all three wide though. There's Charles Jackson. Oh no, there's Richard Johnson, he has damage. Justin Williams has damage. He was involved in the wreck. They're still trying to look like to catch up. Wow. It's very confusing right now. Who's where? Joshua Mudd, the leader, is pitting. Oh, watch out. Wow, the field is really having problems figuring out where they're at. And Sean Galligan, Sean's out of the race. What the heck? That's been the one thing I was watching, though. The lining up is very confusing. It's like these guys don't know where to go. I don't even know what happened to Galligan. Joshua Mudson on the road. He actually has damage. He was leading. That's a tough break for Mud. So hard. Mud has damage now. It's like they're still hitting each other. Like, I can't even keep up with all the action. Joshua Collard should be leading. At least those guys will get trapped and lap down. I think Aaron Williams Jr. is going to be one of them. Whoa, watch out. What in the world? I think the 33 cars actually, he ended up hitting. Everybody's getting their last back. What are they doing? They did not do this a second ago. What the heck? They cannot get organized. I can't even go to a replay. Aaron Williams Jr. is going to go a lap down because of that. I don't know why he pitted, but still trying to figure what the heck is going on. The whole field has been jumbled up. I think they'll be situated yet. It looks like they're actually finally getting together, figuring this stuff out. Wow. That took way too long to get that organized. Heck, by the time we go check the replay out, we're probably going to go back for a restart. But Joshua Collard, your leader under caution for the first time today. Well, that really made things interesting. We'll have to go back and See what all just happened. All right, they're three wide right here. They've been making it work fine, but Daniel Day gets a little bit of help from Justin Williams. They're going to go up into Brody Banton. Day's going to hook the 29 right into Brody Banton. Those two are teammates. And man, watch this four car go up in the air and flip. Charles Jackson actually got a piece of it in the 16. Brody Banton's going to do a nice job of actually being able to continue on. Like, he never actually hit the roof of the car, I don't think. Just kept flipping, and he would get in the air and avoid hitting it. There's Michael Kaji getting a piece of it. And then Justin Williams going to get another piece of it. Everybody else back here slows up, it looks like. Daniel Day got a piece of it right there. And then something happens up here. And we're going to look for the 24. I'm trying to figure out where he's at. Dylan Young is going to have problems up here. Let's see if they see. I think actually these guys get rammed back here. Oh no, there's Trent down with them back there in Galligan. These guys are. They were battling for the lead, I believe. I'm trying to figure out. 
Oh, yeah, they were up at the front. Trent Dunham slams it back to Dylan Young. Sean Gallagher runs it him. Joshua Mudd does. There's where Johnson and Richards get damaged. Osborne. Look at Gallagher. He's going to flip. So far goes around. Look at Gallagher. He's going to land on... Oh, wow. Man, he hit James Qualls. He's on the back of Aaron Williams Jr.'s car. The points leader. There's Dunham. He's still on top of the 33. Oh, he's... What? Oh, my goodness. Has this... No way. Are you kidding me? That three car is making a pyramid. They're making a car pyramid. Qualls and Williams are holding up Galligan. All right. It's ironic. How in the world? I have never seen such a thing like that. Oh, there's where the 33 and the 70 get damaged. Qualls 11th in points. Williams the points leader. Just, wow. I don't even know what to say right there. That was crazy. And then I saw there was another couple of cars that wrecked, I think. Maybe not. But that's probably all that happened. Then everybody had to situate where they're at. We saw other cars slamming each other. But we're probably just going to go back to the replay. Or not the replay, the restart. And just get this going again. Because that's a lot that just happened. And we got to get this field updated. I'm pretty sure Joshua Collard's the leader. But who knows right now at this point. Alright guys, we're back. And we're getting ready for the restart. Dylan Young is out of the race to finish last year. That's really going to hurt him. Joshua Osborne, Brody Banta, Trent Dunham. Who is... Uh, Trent was... Trent with ninth in points. That's going to hurt him a lot. Sean Galligan's up to 15th in points. All those guys around the race. Liam Irvick and Harry Williams Jr. are lap down. Williams is 36th place right now. Sean Hindley, one of the guys bound for the championship, is running second right now. Danny Wells is only 31st. Mike Becker is running. Becker. Becker's in 8th place. And Anthony McCurry right now is running in the 30th place. So Becker is taking advantage, and so is Hindley. Collard has the lead. Here comes Henley going for the lead on the inside in that six car. Not going to get the lap led. And Williams is really in trouble. If he can't get his lap back, he's going to be fighting back there this whole race. And not get his lap back. And Henley is going to clear Collard for the race lead. I think they're starting to wreck on. Yes, they did. They just wrecked back there. Ethan Hamill just got turned. Racing back the line. Obviously, the six and the seven are not going to let the 33 get his lap back. So you guys have to be very careful because they do not uh, restart people. There's Roy Vader view. 13th in points is involved. Ethan Hamill. James Paul is once again involved. 11th in points. There's J Jake Rogers. He's involved. Justin Perry's a little bit of damage. Looks like everybody else is. Oh! Apologize for that. It's going to get up by my mom. Anyway, I just saw Daniel Hummel. He saved it. He got squeezed and got turned a little bit. Looks like everybody else continues. Oh, and Seth Cole in the 52. The bad luck continues with that car. He has a lot of damage on that 52 car. We got some split decisions on pitting. And looks like Henley and Collard sale. There's Mike Becker. He actually has been on pit road for a while, and he looks like he actually could have flipped. And the bad luck for the th 43, who's just getting up in point. It's like that bad luck from Atlanta is carried over today. And man, Becker's just right there, bound for the championship in the bow right there. Could lose a lot of ground today. Depends on. There's Richard Johnson. Richard is he's seventh in points, and he's done, I think. And there goes Becker. He's leaving. We have to keep an eye on all this. Justin Perry trying to get his pit stall. Everybody's leaving. There's a cost. There's a little bit of damage. Daniel Day. There's Charles Jackson. We might go back and take a look at this. Let's see if Henley and Collard. I don't know if they, they were trying to pit and they didn't get to, or they actually staying out. And they're actually coming in, so that's, I'm not sure what this is about. Here comes the 33 and the 21. So Collard and Henley are giving up track position, it looks like. And I don't know if that was a good call or not, but again, not sure what that was about. But we get ready to go back to the restart. It will be Justin Williams, apparently, is going to be leading. We'll go and see what happened to bring out the second caution today here at Richmond. Well, Ethan Hamill is really showing Richmond International Raceplay how to wreck really quickly. Hamill actually is going to self spin right here and he just loses it. Oh, wow, and I just failed. Oh, that was a fail of the day, Trent. Anyway, Hamill's going to go through here and lose it right here. Justin Perry does the exact same thing right into Mike Becker. Hamill hits the wall hard. Becker goes up, hits the wall. There's Perry. There's Hamill. Everybody's trying to squeeze by and avoid. Ryan Acosta, you just got a little bit of it. Vaderview, nowhere to go. Slams into the nine. Jake Rogers got a piece of it. Danny Wells in the five car down there. He just barely avoided that 11 car. That was great driving by the defending champion. There's Rogers with Qualls again, a piece of it. Oh, there's where Richard Johnson got a piece. I think James McLeod actually avoided back to 34. 
He's going to get a little piece right there. Dollarton on the inside against the wall. Dollarton's going to scrape it, but he basically avoided that wreck. McCurry got through, but there's Johnson, Becker, a couple guys in the top 10 in points involved. James Qualls is right outside of it, got involved as well. And Vaderview as well being right outside of the top 15 or uh, top 10. But I didn't see where the 52 car got his damage. Where did Seth get damage? Where is Seth? There he is. Seth was running at 19. Oh, man, I think he's going to run the back of the 32 or the 8. Or does he get hit? There's Hummel back there getting squeezed between Liam Irving and Michael Walton. That flips him over. Now, where does he get his damage from? Seth, oh! Joshua Mudd just stopped right in front of the 52. What was that about? And so did Dally. What the heck? Seth had no indication that the 8 was going to stop, and that was just, I don't know what that was about. The 8-car still slowing down. Was he supposed to be behind him? No, they're supposed to be in front of him. What the heck? I don't get that. And Michael Walton got a little piece of it as well, but Seth is car. His dis the 52 car is destroyed. I don't know what that was about. But we're going to go back to live action. Justin Williams appears to be the race leader. We'll see what he does and what's going to happen next here at Richmond International Raceway. All right, guys, we're back from the break. We're going back from the restart. Justin Williams will be the race leader. More cars dropped out of the race. Really, Raiderview, Ethan Hamill, and Seth Cole are all on the race. Liam Murphy, Mike Becker, Aaron Williams Jr. are one lap down. We're going to see what happens. It's Justin Williams, the rookie, is leading here in the 29. Michael Cross, the second, the third, out here, of course. And Steven Zoss, fifth. Cody Lamas, Luke Walker, Michael Walton, and I think Cole Daly is the top ten. It's flying by a former winner here at Richmond. Oh, and Mike Becker just got hooked by Aaron Williams Jr. And we got a huge crash. Wow, and they're still wrecking bad. Holy cow. And the irony that that was the 33 and then got the 43. And they're still wrecking up here. We're going to have to take a look at that one, too. Wow. I'm not sure what that was about. That was very quick. And there's Charles Jackson, who was front runner for most of this race. He's up here. Of course, the 33 is unscathed, I believe. There he is. Not sure what they're going to look at that for. Cody Lamas is pitting. There's Jack Richards on pit road, the defending winner of this race. He's in trouble. There's Mike Becker. Karma could be a bitch. I'm not sure, but we'll have to really look at that. Ethan Hamill, he's already out. I forgot. There's Justin Williams, he's pitted. He's already in the back now. Cloud has damage. Justin Perry. There's Rogers. Joshua Collard, who was leading, has damage. Like Cole Daly had damage. Luke Walker, there's Randy Carpenter, Daniel Day, there's Jackson smoking. Joshua Mudd's on pit road. Wow. Wait, like I said, we'll have to take a look at that. That was uh, that looked pretty quickly on the restart with the 33. I'm not gonna be the one that starts throwing out penalties, but we're gonna really gonna take a look at that. So I don't know. That was interesting. But Michael Cosby is the race leader, and I don't know what Cody Long is doing. Long is on pit road. I'm not sure what's going on. But we're gonna take a look at the replay and see what happened this time between Mike Becker and Aaron Williams Jr. who are ironically first and second in points coming into today's race. This should be interesting. Now these guys are on the inside. They're both a lap down. Becker was really heavily involved in that last caution. Now he's going to be in the middle lane. There's Alex Jones up there. Oh, this is really ironic. These three together. Oh. Becker has to avoid him the 31. Williams actually slides up into him. And is there that initial contact? Oh, that 33 looked like he was turning a little bit right. I have an idea. Let's go on board with Cody right here. Now, Becker was trying to stay off the 31, who was ironically in that wreck last week as well. He comes down, and Williams actually smacks him in the door. Wow. I don't see any retaliation by the 43. Williams is turning right. And that looks like a dump right there. Hmm. We're going to look at this again. I mean, Williams has the bottom lane. I mean, this is deja. This is really actually not really deja vu. It is deja vu, but very ironic that it's these guys. He didn't even let off the gas. Nope, he didn't. Wow.
It's just a, this is a really tough situation again. I mean, another guy up there. I mean, the points leader causing a wreck like this. I mean, after they had this little scuffle right here where they hit each other, I mean, they should have been cleared up and be able to continue on because Jones, I mean, was nowhere near them. He, they could have moved up. And then it really did look like Williams really wasn't happy with Becker and just dumped him. And what's going to happen here? Ooh, Charles Jackson hit him hard. But then right here, here comes Jack Richards, ironically. These two guys, the first one to hit head on right there. And you don't apply directly to the forehead in this situation. Justin Perry had nowhere to go. And Sean Henley just stopped and avoided it. But, wow. And then up here, I don't know what happened up here. We're going to take a look up here and see what happened. Everybody's trying to avoid the wreck. I think Jackson might have... Oh, no. Carpenter up here is racing with his teammate Cole Daly. Oh, did they make contact? Was that teammates that got together? I think Daly's going to hook Carpenter up into Luke Walker. That was teammates that got together. Daly's going to get hit. Looks like Josh Omega's by Ron Acosta. Is, look at him scraping against the wall. Here comes McCrary. Johnson. Day. But then back here, it was like McLeod, Qualls, Collard. I think they all just spun out. They touched the apron. I think started spinning. Yeah, they did. They both did. McLeod does the same thing. And so does Jake Rogers. Dollarton has nowhere to go, but he's actually going to avoid. Wow. How did that 82 grade scrape that wall? He went from the inside wall scraping to the outside wall scraping and avoided those wrecks. Wow. That was interesting. But again, we're going to have to take a look again and see. I mean, I don't even know. There might be a penalty issued later on. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not going to be the one that starts doing this now, but come on. Intentionally wrecking against somebody, even though they did it last week. If you're going to be a championship contender, you shouldn't just go back and try to retaliate. You should have to be the bigger man about it. But I don't know. Like I said, I guess grudges are still boiling over from last week, even though Williams was in the back of that wreck. But I guess he knew the 43 caused it last week. But that was pretty bad right there, too. I mean, that was endangering a lot of people right there. And a lot of people got involved heavily, so a lot of cars are destroyed. But we'll go back to live action and see what happens next. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to go back racing. Mike Becker is out of the race in 34th place. Jack Richards, Justin Perry, and Charles Jackson are out of the race. Liam Irving and Aaron Williams Jr. are still continuing on. And what the word is sounding like, the 33 is possibly going to get a lap deduction at the end of the race. So even if he gets his lap back, the 33 might end up losing another lap. He basically only on one spot. But that could really hurt Williams, especially if he gets his lap back. He's probably going back a lap down at the end of the race when the results are in the final run. So we'll have to look at him. The caution is out. He's actually going to get his lap back. How ironic is that? Well, that's a tough break. Like I said, he can go up there race for stuff, and he's going to lose a lap and just fall back wherever. And that that's going to hurt that 33 car. But we're under caution again. And Cody Lamas is destroyed. Justin Williams is also involved. Tenth in points. It's Richard Johnson. I don't know if anybody else is involved, but we're wrecking again. These guys are having a hard time keeping their nose clean now, it looks like. And it looks like Chris Kyle is leading, but like again. Or actually, no, it's Michael Cosby leading. They're just so far back. Oh, don't hit. Did Aaron Reed just hit the wall. I saw his car shake. I don't know what just happened. He's got some damage now. Tough break for whatever happens here. We're going to have to go back and look. Justin Williams and a couple others. Now they're going to lead back to Chris Kyle. <laughs> not sure. I think he's actually leading, but they didn't get... They did not get the 33 back to the line, but again, the lap deduction is going to put Williams back a lap down at the end of the results, so they're still not going to help him out. He's going to have to hope for more cars to fall out. I mean, he's not really going to gain anything now. That's a tough break. I said, your director's a contender right now. I mean, it's like borderline danger zone. You guys are really taking chances to really hurt themselves. Or, like, Ray's like shooting himself in the foot doing this, so. We're going to rush him once again. I think this is the fourth time, I'm not sure, but. Leader right now is Chris Kyle. We're going to go back and see what happened with Aaron, or uh, not Aaron Williams Jr. That was my mistake. With whoever was involved in the wreck, Justin Williams and others. Now, the initial caution actually comes up for Richard Johnson. Battling with Aaron Reed, Ryan Acosta, and he actually gets help from Chris Dollarton. And I don't know what that was about either. Dollarton was inside of him, though, but I'm not sure what happened there. That almost looks like the actual wreck we just had. And Joshua Collard, whoa, Steven Gonzalez also sneaks by. But then, what happens to Cody Lamas up here? 
Oh, what the heck? Llama's trying to, I think Llama's is actually trying to come to Pit Road. There's Justin Williams and Llama's oh. <laughs> well whoops. Nothing really can blame anybody but Llama's right there, and that's a tough break. After a strong fifth place run last week, he's not gonna get it today. Justin Williams went to Pit Road. I don't know what's gonna put him at, but that's what happened there. And we saw that race to the line for the lead. And you see Chris Kyle is going to get the lead, barely, over Michael Cosby. That was almost a dead tie. And he saw the 33 get his lap back, but again, he's going to lose a lap again, so it doesn't really matter. He's going to basically still be a lap down. Tough break right there. We'll go back to live action now with Chris Kyle as the race leader. Oh, I did not hit the right button. Woohoo. All right, guys, we're back. Looking through the field. Cody Lama is the only part of the race. Jake Rogers, Liam Irving are one lap down. Richard Johnson actually is continuing on, surprisingly, in that 28. James Paul and Jake Rogers are going on the road. Okay. But on the restart, it is Jake Kyle leading Michael Cosby, Sam Young, Michael Walton, and Michael Norman up there. Tim Walt. Zohar Munn, who started dead last. Danny Wells is up in eighth place. Ron Acosta and Sean Henley has worked way back to the top 10. And is the caution out? Yes, it. Wow, come on. We're in a caution again, guys. Surprise. I don't know why we're having caution when I actually record this and it's clean the time I don't. That always happens. I don't even know who the wreck is for. Don't even see any people that really show anything. But we're in a caution again. Let's go ahead and do a quick replay. Alright, guys. Luke Walker over here. Oh, wrong camera. He actually gets hit by his own teammate. Justin Williams, he slid up into him, and they're getting together and actually hit Aaron Williams Jr. And ironically, too. So there's three cars right there, basically teammates. They just got together. Chris Dollarton got a piece of it. Here comes Richard Johnson. He actually stopped and just missed it. And that was a quick caution. Let's go back to replay or live action, blah, blah, blah. Guys, we're back from that quick replay since that was a waste of time for a caution. Anyway, uh, nobody else dropped out of the race. And some cars did pit, and at least Michael Walton in the lead with another Michael. Michael Norman right behind him, Tim Walsh, Zohar Munn, Danny Wells, Sean Henley, Anthony McCurry, Ryan Acosta, Josh McCollard, and Steven Gonzalez in the top 10. Wanted to point out a fun fact from last week in Atlanta. Both winners in the Cup and Nationwide race were, they started dead last and won the race. Steve Duck won the Cup race, and Sam Young won the Nationwide race, both from dead last. I only bring it up because Zohar Munn is in fourth place right now. He started in dead last today, and he's in fourth. Uh, that's never happened before. Seeing last place win two races in the same weekend. Zohar has a chance to make it three in a row with a damaged 99 car. As Michael Norman is leading, we have cars pitting for some reason. And Tim Wolf in the 77 is leading here in that mobile one Toyota. He's going to be five laps to go as Zohar Munn is going for the race lead. A former winner of the season looking for his second win of the season. Tim is looking for his first ever win. Zohar has the lead going to the corner. And there's Danny Wells and Sean Henley. Where did they come from? Michael Norman going back under Tim Wolf for second. As Zohar Munn with the rear end destroyed on that 99 car and caved in is leading the way. And the caution flag is out. And that could be the race. Acosta is on pit road. I don't know who else got involved. Again, out of the and he's wrecked. Got cars coming down pit road and stuff. I'm not sure. Chris Kyle's on pit road, but Zohar Mun. Yeah, Mun is in the lead right now. Oh, we have problems. Ryan Acosta. What in the world? I think the 09 just hit the pit road wall or something. I'm not even sure. Anthony McCurry has a lot of damage. I think he had just slammed the back of the 38. I'm not, like I said, I don't think this race is going to go back to green. And Zohar Martin, I think, has just won this race. I'm just looking through the field right now. Henley, second. Danny Wells, fifth. Anthony McCurry, sixth. That's huge for those three guys. They can't gain up on the 33 and the 43. With Becker out of the race and Williams with the penalty pending. I don't even know. Actually, it looks like Michael Norman is actually going to be second. They're actually shuffling it back around. Getting everybody in the right spot. Going by Collard. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be Zohar Munn, Michael Norman, Sean Henley, Tim Walsh, Danny Wells in the top five, and it'll be Michael Walton, Anthony Curry, Steven Gonzalez, Joshua Collard, and Randy Carpenter in the top ten. Are these guys pitting? Oh no. Guys, don't pit. Don't, don't, no. They're pitting. They're pitting. And staying out is Anthony 
McCrary. Oh my gosh, the irony of this, because this is the track he gave me. No way. Um. Yes, this track did come from Anthony McCurry. He's the one that edited it for me to help it out and everything. And I, I'm just I'm lost for words right now. If he pulls this off and wins this race, the track he gave me. And he started back in 41st. Oh my goodness. I don't think he's pinning either. And he's not. I don't even know what to say right now. Like, I really don't. I'm looking back, I'm feeling bad for the points leader right now, because when, when these guys go across the line, look where he's going to be, and he has a pending penalty that's going to happen at the end of the race. Aaron Williams Jr., if he didn't have to worry about the penalty, would be in sixth place right now, ahead of everybody in the points battle. Well, that sucks. It just sucks. Well, Richmond definitely didn't disappoint. It's still a, going to be very interesting to look at the points and all that. We might as well just stick with this while we're on the last lap. I don't even know what just happened. I'm so confused right now. Anthony McCurry, uh, I should say, outside of Anthony McCurry, but like I said, Williams will lose a lap. So he's going to drop down to probably the 18th or 17th position, probably. Let's see where it drops him. I'll update and let him know where he finished. Like I said, if it wasn't a contender for the championship, I mean, you shouldn't do that anyway, but I don't know. Like I said, just some very intense. But anyway, go off the final corner. The guy that brought me this track is actually going to win the race for his second time this season. Anthony McCurry is going to win here in the National Series. He takes the Virginia 529. I knew I was going to mess it up. The Virginia 529 College Savings 250 goes to Anthony McCurry. A hometown native of Virginia wins here at Richmond International Raceway. I look back there, I think the 33 actually ran out of gas. Yeah, I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> that was just heck. That was a lot of it. So everybody's trying to cross the line. Like I said, the results are going to be very confusing. And like I said, I don't know for sure. What's probably actually going to happen is Williams is going to be the last car one lap down. So he got back on his lap. I'll drop him down to, I believe, 17. So, I don't know. But Anthony Curry is your winner. He's going to be the big gainer in points since everybody decided to pit on the last lap. But, morons. But, race is over. We're not even going to check the last replay. It was probably was a silly spin. But, just like that, Curry is going to victory lane. You're asking him. Steven Gonzalez, Josh McCullough, Randy Carpenter, Chris Dollar, in your top five. Uh, we're gonna, the rest of the results are going to move up past Williams Jr., who will drop to 17th. So it will be Mudd, Reed, Daniel J., Sam Young, Michael Cosby, the top 10. Then you have Zohar Mudd, Michael Norman, Danny Wells, Sean Henley, Michael Walton, top 15. Like I said, just move everybody up. Tim Walsh will be 16th. Then Williams will move down to 17th, the last car one lap down. The 18th on down is already correct, so like I said, it'll switch. So when you see this, Aaron Williams Jr., you're actually in 17th. So everybody else didn't move up one spot because of that penalty. But actually, I'll show updated results at the end. So just look through this, but ignore it because it's going to update. I'll show it again at the end because of that. But anyway, let me show it again because I just showed it really fast. The points will be shown at the end of the video. Stay tuned for the cup race at Richmond. I know it's kind of rushed. I feel like I did a really crappy job on this race, but uh, I'm just not in the greatest mood right now. So I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too boring or too unprofessional. But I'll see you guys next time. Congrats to Anthony Curry on the second win of his career in the season. I'll see you guys next time here in the Mobile Foundation Nationwide Series. So see you guys then. Oh, and happy birthday, Anthony. You won on your birthday at your home track. Alright guys, never mind what I said. I'm not stooping down to that level to give out penalties. Just not going to do it, so... I don't know. I'm not letting this game drag me down to that level and stoop that low. So, just disregard the penalty last week for Mike Becker. Points are getting added back, and Williams will stay 6th place today. So, just ignore everything I said earlier. I'm not stooping to that level. I'm not taking this game that seriously, and I'm not going to stoop to that level, so... 
not doing that. So forget everything I just said at the end of that video. Everybody, where they finish is where you finish. So points will be updated without penalties for either race. Becker gets his points back and Williams will keep his. So not stooping that level and not going down to that. So yeah, enjoy your time and see you guys next time. Probably not, but I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, and I hope you liked this video for today. I will see you guys next time, very soon, and thanks for watching this digest for you. I will see you guys later, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Bye! the life, time, way, wow. How did I get up there? Ugh, <laughs> The guy did Rohit Ray review! This is gonna be a problem and Ryan Acosta! P200 runs John Dillon up the hill! Justin Perry's on his back bumper! He's gonna get wrecked! Oh, he gets pinned behind the 51! It's, uh, that's all it takes! John Dillon's going back to victory lane! This time in the Boundary Series, John Dillon takes the Daytona 500!